uh, just call me Chris. And this is Old Gray Bricks, and I've got some Old Gray Bricks to show you. I'm unpacking some stuff that I got in an order, and I'll show you a couple of sets I got in it. I'm going to show you another mech that I made, like the uh, Imtron mech last week. And a really cool surprise that I didn't know what I was gonna, that I was going to get this week. So I'm excited about that too. So uh, switch it to a couple of these reviews and everything, and we'll slide on out after that. So guys, be creative today. I'm here at the workbench, and uh, just a couple things. Something that was on my video last week that I didn't describe is this little car. Um, it is a red Barchetta. Um, if you are an old guy like me, you know the band Rush, and you like them very much. And so in the band Rush, there's a science fiction kind of tale of uh, a small car that a guy hides from the law, the overbearing government, whatever. Cool song, but he hides a shining car, and he takes it on an adventure, being chased by big gleaming alloy air cars but in the song which is written by rush by uh, the now deceased drummer for that who wrote the lyrics as well neil pert he used the song used the lyrics from a poem found in road and track magazine to write a science fiction tale of a uh, dystopian future but the joy of driving a car and it does have chrome elements in it because they are mentioned in the song I don't have a chrome bumper on it I probably should but this is generally uh, a little roadster people would call a red Varchetta I did all this work on the snot and then I realized Lego also makes a uh, 4 plus element that would have the wheels and all this and all red and a nice side but uh, I realized that too late it would not have gotten me the look that I wanted here uh, to make sure that the guy is way far back in the car, uh, like the Roadster, small intake, and here. This is the only area that I'm not as super pleased with in the front. I wish it was a, a little more smooth, like the Red Barchetta that you can find on the internet, and maybe a little in the back. I'm not a very good car builder. However, I like this one. Uh, it's a lot of fun. And hopefully one day um, I will make a uh, vignette with it being chased by an air car. So, uh, the next thing that we've built, I've had a little bit of time to build on the holiday weekend. This is a Blacktron ship. It is a Blacktron Meteor Monitor Mark II. It is made after a ship that, uh, a set that Lego made that came in between Blacktron 1 and 2. And the one that they made actually used Blacktron 2 colors, which are black and white and uh, trans neon green or yellow uh, is the color of Mountain Dew. So, uh, but they didn't put that color on there. There was, there was black and white and red, trans red on that one ship, and it was it's kind of an oddball. So what I did was I decided to go back and make it part of my Blacktron um, revival universe that I am coming up with, and I basically used the shape of the model added engines and stuff and since this is supposed to be in space all the time we put a blacktron robot as the pilot which he too is a mix of blacktrons because he has the original symbol which some of you kids may think is the triforce but upside down the triforce is blacktron so I understand that's important but he's also got um, kind of a, a green head there which is kind of a blacktron 2 throwback in this robot. I like him very much and I appreciate Lego bringing back these themes um, in their collectible figures and stuff. So we have uh, added some extra red stuff. These wings are not your normal angled wings. They're from the jets of the 80s so they've got a little extra uh, angle and a lip which actually allows us, I don't know if this will show up, actually allows you to get the bracket piece here to fit up under the edge because it gives you just a little more space than just a plate. So anyway, this is the Meteor Monitor redone and uh, it's kind of wooshy. I don't like it very much. It was a quick Sunday afternoon build, so I built it yesterday after church and came together really well and really fast and it's really sturdy with a lot of floppy bits. And that's unusual for me. All right, so let's put him there. And as you know, I built uh, last week, 
I built the, the Mtron guy. I just dropped him on the floor and his gun came off and I'm not going to dig it as I don't want to reshoot shoot the shot. But here we go. Here is Mtron guy. He is, of course, built on the uh, the, the Spider-Man mech uh, set. Super easy to customize, super easy to play with, and at 10 bucks, what's a great deal for buying Lego? So we figured we needed the enemy, and so we've built the Blacktron version. Dun, dun, dun. He's so mean and so bad, and yet so happy to be evil. Yes, the original Blacktron guys, all they had, even though they were quote-unquote the bad guys of space, they had the smiley faces. This was before uh, and during the time they started making faces with different prints on them, which started with the Pirates line. But anyway, he is totally built on the same uh, principle. He's totally built on the same model, I would say, as this guy. Um, we just added a big uh, axe or staff or something. These windshields came in a Justice League Batman set. Oh, he's moving on his own. And so he still houses the guy, right? And uh, the guy pops out just like normal. It's pretty much a straight-up mod of the uh, um, the Spider-Man mech, which I love. I think it's great. And, uh, in fact, I haven't even put air tanks on him yet. The only thing we did do is I backed off a plate in here and added some tile so the uh, uh, air tanks, minifig air tanks, would fit in there. That's a problem for us old space guys. We have to have our pilots and stuff to have their air tanks on, and that makes it canopies a little harder to get and seats a little harder to make them fit in. So, yeah. So that's what we've been building on the bench the last couple of days during the holiday and uh, hope you enjoy it. And this has been a busy space weekend. I uh, placed an order on Facebook um, uh, Marketplace and was able to get some old classic sets. I already have one of these, but it's always awesome. I never had this one as a kid, but got it restored uh, in pretty good shape. Uh, in fact, some of these grays almost look new gray because they're good and shiny. And I probably need to get them in the light a little better and see if the guy didn't put some new gray in here just to replace a piece or two. Um, but I actually, these have been on display for a while. So I actually replaced these with the ones that were on the bottom because these used to be on the top and they were a little more uh, yellowed out and everything. But I love this Joker. Uh, it's great. But I've got one up on my shelf up there. Um, but something that I had as a kid and wanted I got and I actually got two of them and I'm excited about that and it is the 6870 6870 a really small kit and in my mind I kind of remember having it as a kid but actually I believe I used to build this set and I built it quite often from the pictures um, and you could see uh, the pictures in the little catalog, and you can kind of see what pieces were being used in this. This is beautiful. To me, this is artwork. There's a good chance I'm going to take some of these old instructions and frame them. And yes, for this whole creation, it was just a couple of pages of instructions. Now, the, here's the deal. Back in the day, in the 80s, this is, I don't know if you can read this, this is... 1981. I was 10 years old, 9 or 10 years old when this set came out, right? Uh, these instructions were hand-drawn. They were not done with a computer. They were not done with any CAD systems and everything. And when you look at them, they are so gorgeous. I don't know how they did the process, whether they drew it and then were able to copy it and copy it and add bricks to it. I don't know the process, but this is an amazing amount of work, and I love this construction instruction. I have a, a t-shirt with that printed on the back, and that t-shirt's starting to wear out. But I love, with the little dots, there's just something classic about that and everything. So, I'm going to unbox, I'm gonna unbag these and see what condition they're in. So, I've got one kind of poured out here. We'll put that together. And actually, here's the second one. The guy that sold it to me also, apparently didn't know that the yellow guy didn't come with them, which is kind of interesting. One of the criticisms from space fans about this set is it had came with one guy, and when the guy flew off on the jet, then the 
vehicle was left behind. So the guy who sold it to me sold me a couple of extra spacemen, which was cool. I don't know if he knew it didn't come with it. Uh, and he <laughs> sent me two extra naked spacemen. Naked spacemen. Da -da -da. No clothes. Uh, he is very faded, you can see. Um, the eye is. The disc on the chest is not in bad shape. Uh, the good thing and the awesome thing is these are still really good and stiff. He's really good shape. Um, is they have the super old classic helmets with no ridge here and reinforcement. This is the helmet that Benny has, the helmet that cracks and everything. Ah, look, his head will turn actually with um, the helmet. That was always a problem back in the day. You had to adjust that a little bit because those helmets would snag on there. But, bro, these things are, that's, that's in pretty good shape for a used set. So I'm excited about that. So... Um, tell you what, I'm going to look at these. Looks like there's a little bit of crustiness going on here. Uh, I'm going to clean them up a little bit and uh, come right back. Pretty good here. Um, some of these grays, you know, back in the day there was still some color issues and stuff. But I can tell that these are well played with, but not too bad. There's some love going on. There's some teeth marks. Hey, that's that's the way it is, right? Uh, we didn't have brick separators when I grew up. You had teeth. So, all right, I'll come back and I'll display these um, restored. These up a little bit. And since I have two of these, I can show you two things. So the set was an Explorer where you have the, the dude driving around. It's a cool little car. Uh, and as simple as this is, this is just some of the beauty of classic space. It uh, it has this very industrial look here. Um, it even it looks militaryish, yet it, like an explorer it has this ruggedness for the the planet it's going to be on, all that kind of stuff. This guy's in really good shape here, and uh, if you'll notice that these. Uh, holders here, uh, not clips, but the, the one by one with the round on the side here are a little thinner than what we have nowadays. And what that did actually, these older pieces made those plates actually land flush with the plates uh, going vertical. So the horizontal plate was you know, good for snot building, but the unfortunate thing is these broke a lot. In fact, I replaced one, not because of breaking uh, the way I'm describing, but old age had caused it to split like a Benny's helmet right there So the antenna wouldn't fit in no fault of the guy who sold it to me. It's just age um, but This still looks actually pretty pristine here. Uh, it's in really good shape uh, One thing I did notice because they replaced these later Lego did with the newer version that we have now that's thicker but it does not leave plates flushed anymore. In fact, it makes them a little offset and everything. Oh, look at that crack right there in that piece. That old piece just developed. So yeah, Lego will get brittle after a while and some uh, plastic will. However, these are the common piece nowadays and they are um, stronger and everything. But the thing I just discovered going through my bin, I have them sorted and monochrome these are my monochrome ones but look at that look that joker has gone to tan that joker has gone to tan there's a bunch of these turning tan on me as they get older so i'm going to have to do the uh the treatment on them i'm going to have to put them in peroxide in the sun and see if i can restore them and i hope it doesn't weaken the plastic and stuff like that. If that happens. I got 40 years with a Lego in here. Some stuff's going to get old, just like me. So back to our sets because I love them. Oh, and by the way, if you want a clean Lego, you need a blush brush that uh, a makeup brush that's very very soft. That way you can brush over stuff and ease and get the dust off and everything. And I have been using just some general 409 cleaner, multi surface. It seems to not cause a problem with the, the Lego or take off uh, any decals or it doesn't seem, well, I don't know about decals, but it doesn't, uh, stickers, but it doesn't seem to harm the prints. So that's why I use that. Now, some of you may say, no, don't use that. And please tell me because I want to know. So 
So the guy's tooling along. He's got his rocket in launch position. So that was one of the things back in the 80s. The guy would climb down here. He would check it out. He would get in launch position, right? I'll go on there. There you go. Those bricks are actually pretty stout when they stick together. Uh, a little more crunchy, bunchy um, clutch, it feels like. Feels like more clutch than today, but that's just me. So then he would take off for an adventure. And I love the simplicity, yet complete believability that you could scoot across the moon uh, in this thing right here and make sure that he has plenty of speed. I don't know. I guess you don't want to launch, hit those thrusters right there because it might burn him. And that's the other thing. Maybe he's a little aggravating. He's got to hold on to that, to that steering wheel really good when he launches because he doesn't have a seat. So he could fly off the back of that. Inertia will get you every time. So fly this home. And I always would pretend that he could land it on the vehicle and be ready for another adventure. So much playability with this, even it being so simple and so great. Problems that we always had with this is if you tried to lift it up by the back, sometimes the grip of this would not be more than the grips of this alligator clip right here. That actually can be solved, I think, if you remove this. That helps a little, not much. It'll help a little because uh, there's some clearance issues with with these. Um, but these were made before they redesigned them. They redesigned these to be uh, have a smooth area here and the studs here were redesigned later to not have as much bite on them so that this alligator clip actually would, or not alligator clip, alligator hinge would work a little better, right? But now it's actually got a good bit of bite to it. The ones right after this, this became no studs and this became weak studs here to help with that for playability. Lego changed a lot of molds just before playability. So thanks to the guy though, one of the things is the guy flies off, he leaves his craft. What's he going to do, right? So uh, thanks to uh, the guy who sent me these uh, yellow spacemen, also known as, as naked spacemen, right? Naked spacemen there. He's got a good clear face to him. Really cool there. Um, focus in on that. Come on, camera. Well, there we go. He's got a good good face on him. <laughs> this guy. This guy has seen better days. Um, if you thought Benny was space happy, well, then this poor guy. He's got a dented helmet. He's got uh, weakened eyes, which to me makes like he's old and losing his sight. And uh, he's seen better days, but. He's still trooping on. So I appreciate the guy including these for me so we can continue our adventure. The guy can take off and someone can bring his vehicle home. You know what? This is just the, the heart of what Classic Space was back in the day, the 6870. Love it. Oh, love it. I love these instructions. I love these old pictures. Uh, I would love to have a mural on my wall that was one of these pictures. Uh, just this old style of photography no cgi no nothing and uh, this is in pretty good shape and i appreciate it so good all right to show you before i go today i got in the mail after searching for it and seeing some folks who had it and i think i remember them being out in the day and also i've seen these the fairly rare I was able to locate a uh, Lego LED uh, light here. And uh, let me set my minifigure up here for some size comparison. All right, there's a minifig there. So this LED light actually is the white classic space minifigure. Super excited about this. I'm not sure I'm going to open this uh, yet to make sure I haven't found something fairly cheap that somebody will pay a, pay a mint for and I can have a vacation. However, I would love to have this. I'd love to have him alongside the computer, the classic space computer we talked about last week and everything, but so great. 
love the mold and everything. The only thing I don't like is this in space since 78. That's kind of hokey. It's okay. But I love these accessories here in the light up base um, that it says will light up all that kind of jazz night light in my Lego room. So I'm excited to find this. I found this just doing an internet search, actually an image search on this and found it on a website that ladies sell clothes, used clothes and stuff on. And she actually had this. This is from 2013. Uh, 2013, the Lego group. And some people say these were only, may have been sold more widely in England, maybe, and in Europe. I don't know. But I was able to get one. The box has some rough edges to it. Has a, a tear here, which these kind of boxes sometimes do. But it's a pretty good find. So I'm excited about this. I may review it later, but I'm going to keep it in the box for now to make sure I haven't just hit a gold mine and uh, pay for more Lego with it. However, I want this guy in my room. So, so yeah, it's pretty excited to find this uh, doing an internet search. I'm pretty excited. So got a couple more sets I want to open up maybe for the next show, but uh, I have enjoyed unboxing, cleaning some of my classic, some new classics that I enjoy so much. And I hope you guys like the new mechs, they are really easy for you guys to do. They just Those mechs are 10 bucks. You can then customize them how you want. There's plenty of ways to customize them and it makes it easy. It's a really, really easy jump in to building mechs and having a great time. So I guess what we're gonna do today is have our adventurers flying to battle the new enemy, Blacktron. That's what's going on in my Lego world. Hope you guys have a great day. Be creative because you are created by a creative creator who made you creatively to create. Have a great day.